I'm Jono Buchanan, and in this video we're going to look at Logic's MIDI effect called Modulator. Now when we talk about modulation in synthesis, we usually are referring to the idea of being able to interrupt a signal in some way. Within a synthesizer we might take, for example, an envelope and apply that to the output stage, the volume stage, so that we're able to shape how a sound's volume changes over time. We might want it to fade in and then fade out, and we can do that by applying an envelope shape and passing it into the volume stage of a synthesizer. And we can do the same thing with tone or indeed any other parameter, so long as the synth will let us. But sometimes what we want is much more sort of involved, extreme approaches to modulation. And there's a MIDI effect called Modulator which allows us to do some really interesting things. Before we get to it, let's just listen to the track we'll be working on where no modulation is being applied to the synth pad within this track. Okay, so a really basic sort of backing track. Now, if I open up RetroSynth, which is the instrument I'm using to play this sound back, I can see its settings. And crucially, what I can see is that within RetroSynth itself, the modulation section, the modulators, particularly for, let's say, the filter section, are currently not doing anything. I can see that the LFO is switched off and the envelope is switched off too. So to look at a regular kind of modulation assignment, what I could do, for instance, would be to create a ramp, a ramp up, for instance, over two bars. And what I could then do would be to apply that to the filter by turning up the LFO amount. What that basically means is that we're going to be introducing this shape to the tone or the filter section of the synth pad. And that sounds like this. So what I can now hear very clearly is this ramp starting from a filter position that's so low that we can't even hear the beginning of the note, and then it's becoming brighter at the end. And of course, I could speed it up if I wanted to happen more quickly. I can um, change the amount of it by changing the amount of this dial. But fundamentally, this shape will always be the thing that is modulating the filter. And that's fine until I want something a little bit more extreme. Okay, so what I'm actually going to do is to turn this LFO off for a moment, and instead what I'm going to do is to open up a MIDI effect called Modulator, which is just here. Now effectively, what I can see when I use this straight away is that I've got an LFO and an envelope. So the two modules that we've already talked about, an envelope, a shape that we can use to interrupt a signal in some way, and an envelope, and we'll come back to this in a little while. You can see that this is a modular plugin where I have an opportunity to switch on the modules that I want. The LFO is on, the envelope isn't for now. So what I can do here is to fashion or create a shape that I want to have modulate RetroSynth. And what we'll get straight away is the opportunity to hear the sort of filter movement I was showing you a moment ago, but using this external module as a modulator instead. So let's suppose I decide I want to create a square wave, and let's suppose I want that to play back at a quarter note. What I can see is the shape is being produced down here, and what we'll see when I press play is that the filter envelope is therefore being modulated. Now you might be thinking, well, how come modulator needs uh, knows that it's the filter envelope that I want to be able to modulate, or why is that the parameter which is being modulated? Well, to understand that, we need to come back into RetroSynth for a moment. Let's open it up, and it's sure enough, I can't see anywhere within this filter section that's telling me that the filter is the area that's being modulated. To understand how this is possible, what I need to do is to open up the bottom of RetroSynth and to open up its settings button. And what we're going to see straight away is that what I've got a chance to see is that the filter cutoff is being modulated by the modulation wheel. Okay, why are we getting that modulation then? That doesn't make sense, does it? The idea that the modulation wheel should be the controller for the filter cutoff. Well, actually it does because what we can see is that the LFO is being routed to the mod wheel. So in other words, what we're using the LFO module to do is to create a control message, a signal, a shape if you like, and what we're then doing is to say, I want you to take that shape and pass it to the modulation wheel. And then in RetroSynth, 
The mod wheel is rooted into the filter cutoff, which is why we're hearing this shape now affecting the filter. Okay, but again, I've got a square wave here and I had a square wave available within the RetroSynth LFO itself. So why use modulator instead of the LFO that's actually native to RetroSynth? Well, there are a number of things I can do with the LFO here that I can't do within RetroSynth. And that becomes particularly clear when I also engage the envelope stage. Now, the envelope is going to pass into the LFO. So in other words, any shape that I create here is going to make changes to the LFO waveform. Now we're not seeing those yet, but we will when we start configuring some settings. So what I'm going to do is to turn the envelope into something which is clocked to tempo. I want any changes I make here to follow the tempo of my track. I'm going to set a very quick attack time. And what I'm then going to do is to set what's called a hold value. And I'm going to make that a quarter note. And then what I'm going to do is to have a release time, which is a half note. Now what's going to start happening when I play notes is that we're in a position to introduce LFO interruption of, or envelope interruption of, the LFO signal. In other words, the envelope is going to interrupt the LFO, and we can do that by introducing a couple of different parameters here. I'm going to turn on the amount that the envelope is going to control the LFO rate. What that means is we're going to be interrupting the speed of the LFO using the envelope. Now what I can see when I do that is that I've got my main LFO shape, this square wave that's happening, but the envelope is being um, is basically imprinting itself on the LFO, producing this rapid movement through the shape that I've created here within um, the uh, envelope settings. And I can also introduce the envelope into the amplitude of the LFO as well. In other words, I can make this um, the, the, the height of this waveform change using the envelope as a trigger. Now to hear this, I'm going to need to turn down the overall output level. You can see that as I do this, the overall shape is now lower. In other words, the movement of the LFO is going to be a little bit more controlled and a bit less wide. But at the beginning, when I play notes, the envelope is going to open it up more. Now what I can also do with the LFO is of course to choose different shapes. So far everything we're hearing is with the square wave. But if I want to I can choose this random pattern instead. And that's going to be interesting particularly if I speed up the rate. So if I'm going to take this up to an eighth note for instance and now what we're going to see is this kind of random generated output. I'm going to slightly increase the overall amplitude so that the uh, waveform shape that's being created randomly is has the potential to be both bigger and smaller. And of course we've got our routings in here as well where the envelope is going to trigger um, sort of now random LFO shapes. And we can hear those continue all the way through the release phase of this synth. Let's have a listen to how it sounds in the mix. Okay, so now what we've got is this really interesting interruption which is doing something a bit unusual. Now remember, the reason that this is possible is because this combined collection of modulators is passing through to the mod wheel and the mod wheel is rooted into the filter envelope. But what if what I want to do is to change a different parameter? I don't want the filter cutoff to be the target of um, the movement that I'm creating. Instead, maybe what I want to do is to choose volume instead. Well, what I can see is that if I click on the mod wheel, 
I've got a range of different MIDI controllers that I can assign the output to. I can have it do all kinds of things. For fun, for instance, I could route it through to pitch bend. And what that's now going to do is to create changes to pitch based on the pitch bend value within RetroSynth. Okay, sort of sounds like something's gone wrong, but you can see what's happening when I route the parameter through somewhere else. But what if I choose volume instead? Well, I can see that volume is MIDI controller number seven. It's kind of a universal um, routing. In other words, loads of different synths will uh, respond to the idea that MIDI controller seven volume will then translate that modulation through to um, whichever synth is receiving it. Let's see what that sounds like. Okay, and let's see what it sounds like back away from a random uh, waveform using our envelope as an interrupter through to the LFO, but using a more regular square wave instead. Now what I've done there, just so we can hear it a bit more clearly, is I've turned up the filter cutoff. Now remember, we're not routing the LFO and the envelope through to the um, filter cutoff anymore. It's controlling volume. But I've made the sound a little bit brighter overall, and in fact, that's given me an idea. I could actually combine modulation settings here. What I could do would be to keep the modulator MIDI effect continuing to control volume. And at the same time, what I'm going to do is to come back to this ramp that I had right at the beginning of the video. And what I'm going to do is to set the ramp to work over one bar, and I'm going to introduce that into the filter cutoff. And that means that I've got two lots of modulation happening at once. I've now got RetroSynth's own LFO producing a ramp to the overall tone of the sound. And I've now got the modulator plugin messing around with the volume shape. So what we've seen within this video is that we've got an opportunity to work with modulation. Let's just understand what that means. Modulation is the capacity to interrupt a signal with something else. We can take the output of one thing and physically plug it into something else, whether that's an LFO, an envelope, or another kind of modulator. And what we've seen is that by using the MIDI effect modulator itself, we can start to play around with modulation possibilities that aren't available within Logic's own synthesizers. Yes, I've got an LFO within RetroSynth, but I can't do this with it. And not only that, by using the modulator in this way, I can actually combine what it can do with RetroSynth's own modulation possibilities. So now I've got filter control coming from within RetroSynth, as well as volume control from modulator. Really, from a sound design point of view, I've got all kinds of options now.